Whether you're a seasoned traveler or new to life on the road, we all make mistakes. I'm sharing five common ones I wish someone would have told me when I was starting out. Number one, too much stuff. I was definitely guilty of this because I love to plan, but you would have thought that I was planning for an apocalypse with the things that I brought. I wanted to try to make sure that I covered all my bases and thought of everything. So I really tried to pack way too much stuff into such a tiny space. And as I went along, I realized that I didn't need to go overboard with the amount of things that were necessary in your home on wheels. And if you're not sure where to start, I'd suggest making a list of things that fall into six main categories. For instance, what are the things that are essential for sleep? So that would be a bed or a mattress of some sort and blankets or a sleeping bag or sheets. Then what's essential for cooking, water, a stove, food pantry items. What's essential for lighting and power? There are so many options available. You just need something basic to start out. What's essential for hygiene? The bathroom. Again, it doesn't have to be that complicated. What is essential for clothing? Remember, you can always visit thrift stores. You can swap things out with others. You can go to a store or retail place. So don't think that you have to have an entire closet in your tiny vehicle. And finally, what are you going to need in case of an emergency or a breakdown when you can't call AAA or get to a repair shop or a gas station where they might have supplies anyway? So thinking about those things and answering them honestly will keep you from packing a whole bunch of non-essential stuff into a very limited space. not planning ahead for where you're going to sleep. That can mean the difference between this view and this view. One very common thing that happens early on is decision burnout. So unless you are planning to stay in one place for an extended period of time, it's good to think about and have options for where you are going to sleep depending on what area you're in. And obviously it's going to depend a lot on your resources, your budget for that kind of thing, and the kinds of activities and things that you plan on doing. I'd suggest having several options for any given area. I like to have one or two main options and then several backups for each area that I am going to be passing through or staying in for any length of time. And that can mean anything from a truck stop rest area, Walmart parking lot, or a dispersed camping site. And you may even want to plan for those occasional times when you really need another place to pay for, either a campground or a hotel, an Airbnb, even friends that you might have in the area. When I hurt my wrist, I really couldn't be in my vehicle because I couldn't manage anything. So I was able to book a hotel for a couple nights until I could get it figured out how I would get to the home of a family member where I could stay and recuperate. Another common mistake is not trying your layout or knowing the measurements before you decide on some permanent items or permanent layout for your van. It can be tricky because sometimes you're not sure of the measurements until you're in there. And that's why I would suggest waiting, sitting in your van, being with it, trying out a few things before you make the permanent cut for your vehicle. When I started out, I didn't have my bed like this and that was something that I quickly realized that I wanted to change because I do like to have others in here to either play a game or to have a meal or share a conversation when it's not 
doable outside. So I totally reworked my layout to accommodate certain things and make it conducive to the types of things that I knew that I wanted to enjoy or do inside of my vehicle. shake and move and rattle and roll and you have to think about that as you're making your layout and you're planning and what you have back there because you don't want to be hearing a whole bunch of rattling as you're going down the road either and you don't want to have things flying forward so you want things to be very well secured and uh, be mindful of things that are loose in the vehicle so for any sudden stops or when you're going down or over bumpy roads. And something else is thinking that you need to have everything that you would have in some type of permanent home. This is a tiny home on wheels and you have to remember that. It may be tempting to want to have all the creature comforts that you would have anywhere but sometimes it is not feasible depending on the type and size of your vehicle. This ties in with the first point, which is having too much stuff. You can do without a flush toilet or a touch faucet or running water. It isn't that difficult to do and to change the way that you may do certain things. The larger the system that you have, the more potential for things breaking down. So really think about what are the essentials for you for living comfortably. It may look a lot different for your home on wheels than it would for a home that is not on wheels. All this depends, of course, on your space, your budget, your skill level, your comfort level, the things that you want to do or don't want to do. I love coffee and at a house I may have electricity that I can plug into very regularly so a coffee maker might make sense or a Keurig or something like that. But in a tiny space where those things are a little scarcer, you have to think about what are some options that will still get you the thing that you love, which is coffee, <laughs> uh, but maybe it'll be enjoying it in a different way. My suggestion would be to start with the bare minimum and build on that. That way you won't be sifting and sorting through extraneous things and you don't know why you brought them in the first place. Start with some very basic utensils, basic pots and pans. And obviously if it's something that you enjoy, like cooking, some people are chefs and really enjoy that and will continue to enjoy that as an activity in their tiny home. And that may mean that in other areas you will have to have more bare essentials if you want to take up the space for all of the items that you would need for your gourmet kitchen. Glass items I quickly learned were something that I just didn't want to have in my van because it could break too easily. Bulk items as well. At first I thought I could buy in bulk and then have a stock of things in case I needed them. But I quickly learned that it's just as easy to get what you need when you need it. You may want to have a few items like batteries or things that you typically wouldn't want to run out of, but most of the things that you think that you need, you can get along the way. So I hope you found some of these suggestions helpful. I know that I would have wished that somebody would have told me some of the things to avoid when I was starting out. I've tried to think of some of the basic mistakes that we all tend to make, but if you have any suggestions that I might have missed, I'm sure there are plenty, please leave them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.
I'm sharing. Oops. I'm sharing five common ones. Try to bring everything you think you might need. I'm sharing. I'm sharing some common ones I wish somebody would have told me so that I could avoid them.